Apple has shown that they haven't completely dumped their professional market and that they are still interested in having something for most levels of professionals. The iMac Pro is a pretty incredible machine and while power is important to us and to most of our audience, this particular machine might be too overkill for most of us. There is still one machine, which if you're a Mac user with work to do, should not overlook. Introducing the 27-inch 5K iMac. Is it still worth the money? The exterior design consists of aluminum. This device is very sleek and very beautifully designed. It is built very strongly and the stand is built out of the same material. There's also a tilt mechanism, though unfortunately no height adjustment. The exterior design is as incredible as expected from Apple at this point. And the front itself consists of the 27 inch 5120 by 2880 resolution display, the 720p FaceTime HD webcam, and the Apple logo. This iMac features a pretty complete set of ports, including a headphone jack, SD card entry, four USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and an Ethernet port. You'll also find some cooling vents around the back and also a slot for upgrading the RAM. More on that soon. This iMac features a beautiful 27-inch 5K display that favors color accuracy over saturation and artificial beauty, if that makes any sense. This display is meant for more professional work, though it still displays videos and films beautifully. This display is one of the best ones in the market. The webcam, to put it simply, is just not very good. It's okay for casual use, but if you depend on a good webcam for your own business needs, then you're better off purchasing a secondary webcam. The speakers are okay for normal use. Videos and music sounds, pretty decent for casual use. But if you depend on good audio for your business needs, again, you would need to upgrade your audio setup. For most headphones that don't necessarily require an amplifier in order to make the most out of them, this iMac can deliver enough power through the headphone jack to get very good audio. So, I believe that that is just something to keep in mind. This is rather close to the baseline iMac in terms of specs, featuring a KB Lake Intel Core 5 quad-core CPU running at 3.4 GHz, an AMD Radeon Pro 570 GPU with 4 gigs of VRAM, 32 gigs of RAM even though the absolute base model comes with 8 gigs, and a 1TB Fusion Drive, though you can upgrade to an SSD. So now, as this is a quick review of the product, let's move on to the performance of the iMac with professional software like Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. Generally speaking, the iMac performs very well, though not exceptionally. Working in Photoshop with such a great display makes working with colors much easier. Performance in the software is incredibly smooth and they haven't experienced any hiccups along the way. Most Photoshop projects will not suffer because the specs are good enough to accommodate them and the performance goes to prove this statement. Premiere Pro performs incredibly, as I usually edit 1080p ProRes footage at full resolution without issues within the software and with rendering. When working with 4K files, however, there's a bit of stuttering when playing back the footage at full resolution. Color grading or other effects are not enough to slow it down very much, even at this stage, but I would still recommend reducing the playback quality to half. This issue is almost erased with Final Cut, thanks to its real-time rendering. And yeah, Editing 4K footage at full resolution isn't a problem, even without hyper-threading on this CPU. Performance with GPU rendering is much better than in Premiere, however. After Effects is also pretty smooth. For the most part, it is more resource demanding than Premiere, and it will chew through as much RAM as you allow it to. There will be the occasional slowdown or stutter once your effects start getting more complicated but it is nonetheless a very doable job. In other words, 1080p video and other content can be handled just fine, and 4K content will also be handled quite well, but with some minor compromises. Good news, by the way, this machine is slightly upgradable. You can opt in for a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM from the factory, but you can add up to 64 gigs of RAM on your own. This is more than enough for most people, and certainly for the prosumer crowd. You can also upgrade the internal drive, but that is a much more complicated process, and I do not recommend you do so. Go with an external drive if you can, and it's still very viable, as the Thunderbolt 3 ports offer crazy speeds. So this machine is clearly very usable, and it will suffice just fine for just about anything, but it won't perform the best in every department. I wouldn't recommend this machine for anyone that won't benefit from the power of this machine. You can just go for the smaller 21-inch model if you have to go for an iMac that have much more basic usage. That one still has a beautiful display, but the machine I have in front of me is certainly quite powerful, with a beautiful form factor and a fantastic display. And all-in-one computers? That is very difficult to compete with. Now, I do have some complaints, or rather some quick things I'd like to touch on. The sands could be better for how much it costs. It's obviously very strong, but it only lets you tilt. It should have at least added height adjustment. I'm personally still not huge on macOS. I wasn't last year when I got access to this machine, and I'm still not now. 
So if you're looking at this machine as a Windows user and to think that it might change your mind on how you feel about macOS, it is definitely not going to do that for you. Also, this machine, while it's not too often to bother me, does still thermal throttle. I haven't heard the fan spinning up until long editing sessions, but the CPU is clearly getting hot and the fans don't ramp up until the very last minute. It's unfortunate, and I don't know why this is done. Ooh, okay. So thank you for joining us in this quick review of the 5K iMac. This is a great product, and I believe that it is worth the price. Our model here costs $2,400, which is still pretty steep. The display and the RAM are probably most of that money, to be frank. Yeah, it's worth the price, especially when compared to the MacBook Pro, but you do sacrifice portability. Boohoo if that isn't a factor for you because this is a more complete machine either way. At this point in time, I would recommend it to those who can take advantage of the power. However, do keep in mind that this machine will probably get a spec bump soon, and with Intel now focusing on adding higher core counts to their consumer CPUs, they will receive quite a significant spec bump when that happens. With this in mind, if you don't care about what comes later and need something now, this is a great machine for you. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to stay updated when a new video comes out, make sure to click on that bell and enable notifications. And for links to everything featured in this video, expect to find those in the description as well as links for what to watch next. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.